the ship was delivered uh, by um, some of the members that are still on board mm -hmm. from uh, Hobart in Tasmania. Uh, that took approximately three and a half to four weeks um, to bring up from the yard. Uh, virtually non-stop with a couple of stops in uh, Fremantle, Seychelles, Malta and up to Dover. Sea cats are renowned for their um, jerky motion but the days of the vomit comet as they were officially known in the early days are, uh, are long gone. Uh, this craft is the, the, the latest to be built. Um, she's uh, got unique features with ride control which makes her a lot more um, seaworthy if you like for passengers moving around the vessel a lot more comfortable so um, and again with the accommodation being bright and open uh, everybody can see out you're all on one level there's no stairs to go up and down once you're in the main passenger area um, and the feedback yeah is good it's a high speed craft um, wave piercing catamaran which uh, means that we've got two slender aluminium holes the whole ship's built of aluminium uh, powered by four man diesel engines we are actually the largest largest diesel powered catamaran in the world at the moment uh, engine power maximum is 50,000 horsepower and uh, the, the power comes from the engines via a gearbox to the water jets which is what we're propelled by. We can carry uh, in the region of 350 to 400 cars or a combination of cars and freight which um, our nearest competitor when they had a fast craft was only 180 cars. Fuel cost wise is about 20% more than a, an average old high speed craft and is uh, similar to a ferry but again, we can get higher frequency in turnaround because of our speed. Um, so the economies are scaled there. We've also got less crew. Maximum crew we have is 28. So again, there's a cost saving there. Uh, it's unique, very unique. And it's a, it's a specialist role. To, to become a, an officer or even crew member on a high-speed craft, you have to take a specialist training on board called a, a, a high-speed craft type rating system. And so this is unique to high-speed craft. And they have to undertake this system and pass out before they can actually be live on these type, types of craft. Ship handling is the same, principles are the same, put the ship in the right position and uh, no paperwork afterwards. Um, if you can manage that every time, I was a pilot beforehand in the port of Dover, so I was driving you know, small gravel boats up to 300 metre cruise ships. Um, the principles are the same, it's just that the, the mechanisms we have to do it are different. Because of the high speed, we obviously um, have a um, we're very aware of that and, and to that extent I'm on the bridge all the time and so is the chief officer who's a designated navigator plus we have a lookout as well um, because that's a feature of the speed things happen a lot quicker um, so we, we're all paying attention. The other factor is of course is that the chief engineer is on the bridge as well so he's not here primarily for a lookout but all his monitoring systems are there so we're a closed up knit bridge team much uh, the same as on, a, on an aircraft. We've got the latest state-of-the-art equipment um, which is, uh, has been put on board, so from that point of view it's, it's fantastic. Uh, we're almost in the process of becoming chartless for, for nautical charts, so we just have two independent systems, which makes, um, yeah, it makes the, the system uh, a lot more streamlined. The whole idea of high-speed craft is minimal weight on board. We're aluminium. Um, if we can keep the weight on board down, the faster we go, which obviously is the time saving to uh, the customers on board. 